The story begins with two professional assassins, Kazuki and Rei, flawlessly carrying out the mission to assassinate a smuggler. After completing their mission, they return to their huge apartment. In their daily lives, Kazuki handles all the household chores, while Rei spends his time playing video games. During their work as assassins, Kazuki is the mastermind who plans everything, while Rei is the executor. Now they get their next mission, as well as the money for their previous assassination work. Their next target is a human trafficker, who's going to appear at a hotel. As Kazuki explains his plan, a girl named Miri comes out of a train and runs throughout the city, asking everyone if they've seen her dad. She even asks a Christmas tree, Have you seen my papa? Her whole day passes like this, and night falls. Miri then steps into a hotel, hoping to find her dad there. At the same time, Kazuki also enters the hotel to get their job done. He manages to trick the guard into letting him into the elevator to deliver a cake for the party he's made. Suddenly, Miri sees the cake and runs towards it, entering the elevator along with Kazuki, ruining their plan, but cannot bring himself to deny her request to taste the cake. Miri eagerly eats the cake and asks him, Have you seen my dad? And as he says no, the elevator door is open and Miri runs out, causing suspicion. Rei is forced to shoot the bodyguards from where he's hiding under the cake trolley. As Kazuki runs after Miri to stop her from causing even more trouble, Rei runs down the hallway to take out the other guards, and once the guards are down, Rei, Kazuki, and Miri all bust into the Christmas party. The guests run out terrified, while Rei heads straight for the head of the human trafficking. Kazuki loses Miri in the crowd, only for her to show up next to their target, asking him if he's her father before he takes her hostage. As the target points a gun at Miri's head, Kazuki runs up to save her, tearing off his beard and declaring himself her father, and tells her to jump into his arms. Miri jumps towards Kazuki while Rei shoots the target, killing him, and leaves from there by shooting through the window. Once the mission's over, Kazuki and Rei end up bringing Miri home. They then find photos in Miri's bag, showing that the target they killed was her real dad. Miri's mom left a note as well. She's mad at Miri's dad for leaving her, and wants him to take care of Miri now. But as her dad's now dead, they want to send Miri back to her mother. However, Miri doesn't know where she lives, as she's just a kid. Desperate, they leave Miri in their apartment, and convince Kiyutaro to research their target's girlfriends hoping to locate Miri's mother without revealing Miri's existence to Kiyotaro, who is already angry at how badly they carried out the Christmas party mission. But they still receive their next mission. As they leave, a mysterious man named Ogino walks in and requests to be informed about upcoming jobs. Returning home, Rei and Kazuki find a messy house but discover it was Miri playing hide and seek. While having dinner, Kazuki reads about their next target, a drug kingpin who lives in a well-guarded mansion. As they discuss their plans, Miri rudely comments on Kazuki's cooking and runs off to play hide and seek in the hallway. After gathering supplies for their mission, Rei and Kazuki prepare to leave, but have no idea what to do with Miri. Kazuki tries to bribe her with snacks, but she cries loudly, attracting the attention of their neighbors. So they decide to bring her along and leave her in the van. The plan is for Rei to wait in the backyard, while Kazuki pretends to be a security system repairman to lure out the target. However, just as Kazuki is about to enter, Miri honks the horn and says she has to pee, but he urges her to hold it so they can proceed with the mission. While Kazuki sets up explosives in the target's mansion, Miri rings the doorbell and asks a henchman if she can use the bathroom. He allows her in, but she spots Kazuki and draws attention to him. The henchman chases Kazuki, who in turn chases Miri when she runs away to start a game of hide and seek. They end up in the target's room, surrounded by security. When all seems lost, the henchmen are taken down one by one, and we see Rei shooting from the backyard. Kazuki protects Miri, and they run while Rei engages in a gunfight with security. They manage to escape on a speedboat, but Kazuki scolds them both for ruining the mission. Kyutaro fires them from the mission, but informs them he located a woman likely to be their previous target's girlfriend. They're relieved, thinking it might be Miri's mother. Meanwhile, Ogino succeeds in killing the kingpin and his guards. The next day, Rei has a bad dream and wakes up when Miri jumps over him. During breakfast, Miri climbs up onto Kazuki's lap. He shows her some bananas and asks if she wants them instead, so she'll get off his lap and he can finish eating. Kazuki then goes to meet Kyutaro, who gives him the address of Miri's mother, and hints at knowing about Miri without directly mentioning her. At the park, Kazuki and Rei share memories of their childhood while talking about Miri. Kazuki reveals that he never met his parents, leading him down this path, while Rei seems to have a bad relationship with his parents. At night, Miri searches for Rei and finds him asleep in the tub. She wants to sleep with him to feel safe and tries to make him smile, but he says he wasn't raised that way until she finally falls asleep in the tub. The next day, Kazuki and Rei take Miri back to her mother. Kazuki goes ahead to check her mother's workplace, leaving Rei and Miri in the car. Inside, he encounters her practicing and gets attacked by her boyfriend, who's also the bar manager. Kazuki quickly gains the upper hand, forcing the man to flee. Miri's mother is upset by the incident, but still offers to treat Kazuki's cut 
on his face. Meanwhile, Miri forces Rei to take her to a nearby park, forcing him to play with her. He asks her why she insists on referring to Kazuki as Papa, and not her real father. But she replies that a Papa is the person who saves you when you're in trouble. This makes Rei think about his own father, who treated him harshly, raising him to fight and kill. As he comes back to reality, Rei realizes that he's lost sight of Miri. Back at the bar, Miri's mother, mentally broken by her terrible life, resents Miri for being born and refuses to take responsibility. So Kazuki leaves, disgusted that a parent could hate their own child. While searching for Miri, Rei finds two policemen trying to take Miri as a lost child, and considers abandoning her. But when she cries, he decides to be better than his own father, and retrieves her, claiming he is her papa. On their way back to the car, they meet up with Kazuki. Rei wonders what's next, and Kazuki says Miri is going to live with them. The next day, Miri tries to help with household chores like cleaning and watering the plants, only to mess them up. Exhausted, Kazuki and Rei take her to the park. While there, they spot a daycare van, which gives them the idea to enroll Miri in daycare so that they can work without her interference. They start calling nearby schools, but unfortunately, none of them are accepting new students. After their unsuccessful attempts to find a daycare for Miri, Kazuki and Rei take her to the government office for assistance in enrolling her in a school. They're informed that by completing the required paperwork, Miri should be able to start school soon. Back at home, Kazuki is worried about submitting government documents as an assassin, so he decides to obtain forged documents instead. In the first interview, Miri says too much about her father's forgeries and guns, so Kazuki and Rei take over and leave from there. They tell Miri to let them handle the talking in the next interviews. During the next one, the instructors ask Miri about her fathers. She praises them, saying they don't do anything bad. Kazuki quickly explains that they work as city cleaners, and as the interview goes well, the instructors tell them that she is accepted in the school. Kazuki, Rei, and Miri go to the department store to get daycare supplies. Kazuki tells Rei it's important to make a good impression on ordinary people, so buying brand name items will help to impress others. They buy a lot of things for Miri, but struggle when they realize they need to label all of her belongings with her name for school. On Miri's first day, they arrive overdressed and catch the attention of the other parents. They're given a tour of the daycare by the instructor, who explains the daycare's routine. However, after Kazuki and Rei leave, Miri struggles to connect with the other children, who refuse to play with her. When they pick her up later, Miri doesn't look happy after attending the daycare. As Miri continues to attend daycare, she seems sadder every time Kazuki comes to pick her up. One evening, he arrives early and notices Miri sitting alone. Miss Anna, the instructor tells him that Miri's clothes make her stand out too much. She suggests a different store where they can find cheaper clothing. They take Miri on a much cheaper shopping trip to buy more normal clothing. Kazuki sends her to school in a more normal outfit and sticks around for a while to help her attract friends. He starts playing ball with Miri, which attracts other children who want to join and play with her. Later, when he comes to pick her up in the evening, Miri tells him that she finally had fun. Now, having run out of money, Kazuki and Rei beg Kiyotaro for work. Not trusting them with assassinations again, Kiyotaro gives them several smaller missions. But due to a flu outbreak, Kazuki got a call from the daycare that it's temporarily closed for a week. Miri is assigned homework to learn about her, her parents' jobs, so they have to take care of her at home. They lie to her about their real jobs and use the time when Miri is sleeping to complete their actual missions. One day, Kazuki tells Rei he's going out to do a job and tells him to look after Miri. However, Rei falls asleep and doesn't wake up when Miri tries to get his attention. So she decides to sneak out and secretly follow Kazuki to discover more about his job. But she gets distracted when she sees a dog and stops to pet it. This causes her to lose sight of Kazuki, and when Rei wakes up, he realizes that Miri is missing. After confirming she is lost and not playing hide and seek, Kazuki and Rei begin searching for her throughout the city. Meanwhile, she finds herself outside of Kiyutaro's cafe, where she bumps into Ogino. Who Just then, Kiyutaro comes out and brings her inside. Kazuki begins to expect the worst until he and Rei return to Kiyutaro's cafe and find her sitting at the counter. Excited to see him, Miri immediately calls him Papa, which confuses Kiyutaro. Kazuki claims to have been babysitting her to make extra money. Kiyutaro is suspicious and offers to babysit Miri so they can finish their job. After Warning Miri not to call them Papa in front of Kiyutaro, or talk to him about them at all, Kazuki and Rei drop her off at Kiyutaro's cafe. They head off to a job while Kiyutaro makes Miri a drink. She asks if he knows what Kazuki and Rei do for work. Kiyutaro lies and says Kazuki is a comedian, and Rei is an oil baron. While drawing a picture of their jobs, Miri slips up, calling Kazuki and Rei Papa, 
before quickly trying to cover it up. Kyutaro quickly realizes Miri's actually being raised by them. Kazuki and Rei return to the cafe to pick up Miri after finishing their job. They take her in their arms, but in her sleep, she continues to call them Papa, and Kazuki quickly tries to cover, saying they plan to return Miri to her family eventually. However, Kyutaro reveals that he knew about everything, but luckily doesn't mind as long as it doesn't affect their work too much. Later, when Miri presents her report at daycare, it shocks the mothers to learn that her dads are secret oil billionaires. The next day, Anna reports to Kazuki that Miri hit her friend Taiga during playtime, so he asks Miri about the fight, but she says it was Taiga's fault and argues with him, feeling frustrated that he doesn't believe her. She runs away in anger. Next morning, Miri asks Rei to take her to daycare instead. Due to his guilt, Kazuki forgets Miri's lunch and decides they must take it to her even though the daycare is on a zoo trip. At the zoo, Miri and her friends are troubled by Taiga, and the children wind up separated from the rest of the class. Realizing they're lost, Kazuki and Rei follow closely as Miri tries to lead her friends back to the group without directly interfering. Kazuki notices that Miri takes care of Taiga despite their earlier fight. While searching for their class, Miri and her friend decide to take a break for lunch. Kazuki is still figuring out how to give Miri her lunch when she realizes she doesn't have one, so Taiga shares his own and says sorry for being mean before. While eating lunch, a thief suddenly comes and grabs Miri, Demanding Miri and her friends hand over their lunches, Taiga grabs the thief's arm to protect Miri, but he gets caught in the process. Before the thief can act, Kazuki and Rei appear in mascot disguises as an alpaca and rabbit. The thief's attempt to fight them proves futile, as the rabbit takes out his gun and kicks him, while Alpaca delivers a headshot and a kick, causing the thief to fall to the ground. The children then thank them for saving them. Eventually, Miss Anna and the children find each other. She's surprised to see Miri and Taiga getting along, and it's revealed that Miri had accidentally hit Taiga the day before, and it was not a fight as initially thought. Anna wrote about this in Miri's diary. Kazuki feels guilty for arguing with Miri, despite her telling him it wasn't her fault. He then hugs Miri and apologizes for being upset with her, and for getting her lunch, while Miri asks to eat the lunch he forgot to pack. The next day, a woman named Karen visits Kiyotaro's cafe, who asks Kiyotaro where Kazuki is. Kazuki picks up Miri from school during a rainy day. Miri drops her umbrella, but he stops her from going out. When it's hit by a car, he has a flashback to another umbrella being destroyed in an accident. During dinner, Rei and Miri complain about the food they don't like. Kazuki gets angry and takes away their plates, saying they don't have to eat. The next day, he leaves a note saying he'll be out. With Rei and Miri at home alone, Rei takes on the responsibility of making them breakfast. They have cereal and Miri asks if she's going to daycare. He realizes it's already late and quickly gets her ready, packs her bag and takes her to daycare on his bike. To get Rei and Miri to help and appreciate him more, Kazuki goes to hide out at Kiyutaro's cafe. He complains about everything he does for them as they were conversing. Kiyutaro tells him that his sister-in-law, Karen, has once again returned the money he sent. After a day of heavy drinking and getting into fights with men on the street, Kazuki encounters Karen. She asks him if he's alright, and tells him that Kiyutaro has told her everything. He tries to walk away, but she loudly says she can't accept his money. She doesn't understand why he sends it in the first place, asking, It's not like it's your fault my sister died, right? Kazuki responds that it is his fault, as he killed her. Then we see a flashback where Kazuki chases a man down a dark alley on a job, but the man manages to escape by stealing a car. As the car speeds away, it collides with a gas truck, triggering a massive explosion. Unfortunately, Kazuki's wife, Yuzuko, happens to be crossing the street at that moment and gets caught in the blast before he can warn her. The next day, Rei wakes up to find Miri has a fever, but Kazuki still hasn't come home. He tries searching for medicine, but finds none for children, so he takes her to Kiyutaro for help. Meanwhile, Kazuki is visiting Yuzuko's grave, and he thinks back on the first time he met her. Karen walks up and reminds Kazuki that Yuz Yuzuko wanted him to be happy. She then asks about the child he took in, expressing her belief that he can make her happy. He says he will try his best. He then returns home and finds the house messy, but discovers Rei and Miri sleeping in her room, and her fever is also gone. Early one morning, Rei gets dressed, telling Miri he's going to visit his home. Kazuki is surprised to hear that Rei's father called him home, but is pleased to have him out of the house as he and Miri are planning a party for him. When Rei visits, his father is a cold, older man, and his son addresses him as boss, rather than dad. It's been three years since Rei last visited. After explaining that being an assassin is in his blood, Rei's father says it's time for him to come back home to run his family business by becoming the head of the organization. He asks for time to think about it, and his father agrees, 
but it gives him a job to complete before the end of the day. As Ray gets ready for his mission, Ogino drives him to the target's location and shares information on the target. Ray realizes he knows the target, and had learned several skills from him, but is now tasked with killing him after hearing he betrayed the family, as he wants to leave the organization for a woman he loves. Before Ray leaves the car, Ogino asks him to share the target's last words just before he dies as he likes to collect them in his notebook. Ray then confronts the target, and they start shooting at each other. The target, who has known Ray since he was young, expresses surprise that Ray left the family. However, seeing Ray's loyalty to the Suwa family now that his father wants him back, the target acknowledges that Ray truly is a Suwa at heart. While nobody is permitted to leave the organization, the target reveals that he found something valuable to protect, which she believes Ray wouldn't understand. In the end, Ray still manages to beat him shooting him in the leg. Ray then says he does have something worth protecting, before the target stumbles back, breaking through a railing and falling to his death. Now, instead of riding back with Ogino, Ray decides to stay back and starts thinking about what the target said during their fight. Kazuki calls and asks where he is, but Ray says he needs time to cool off. While he's thinking, Kazuki shows up with Par to pick him up. Ray returns home and witnesses the aftermath of the surprise birthday party that Kazuki and Miri were attempting to throw for him. While Kazuki is lighting candles on a cake, Miri, who is half asleep, wakes up for a moment to say happy birthday to Rei. Later, Ogino brings a new target to Kiyutaro, given directly by the boss. Kiyutaro opens the envelope and discovers that the new targets are none other than Kazuki and Miri. In the next scene, we see Miri, Rei, and Kazuki at the park, helping her train for her upcoming field day race. The next day, they all go to Miri's daycare for the event. As Miri joins her classmates, Kazuki and Rei find a spot to take photos and interact with the other parents, and watch the kids participate in various outdoor activities and events. The group then breaks for lunch before the start of the afternoon activities. Ray's rice balls are popular with the children, since he filled them with sweets and snacks. The first afternoon event is the race, where Miri hopes to win a gold medal. As Miri participates in her race, Kazuki enthusiastically cheers for her. Ray, overcoming his shyness, also joins in and cheers loudly. However, the sudden sound startles Miri, causing her to stumble and fall during the race. Although she received a medal, it's not a gold one, but just a participation medal. Feeling like Miri's lost was his fault, Ray decides not to participate in the parent-child race, and instead watches from the sidelines. Kazuki steps in as Miri's partner, and together they compete against other students and parents in a race filled with obstacles, as Ray cheers them on from the sidelines. One of the final obstacles in the race is a scavenger hunt, where each pair is given a card with an item to find. Miri receives her card and initially looks a bit sad, but then grabs Ray and holds onto him tightly. They continue running until they cross the finish line together and win the gold medal. Later, she reveals that her card said family, indicating that she knows the true meaning of family, causing Kazuki to cry. At the end of the day, Kazuki and Ray take a family picture together with Miri. Meanwhile, we see Ogino reminding Kyutaro not to forget their job, as he looks at family photos of Kazuki, Miri, and Rei. The next day, when Rei and Kazuki arrive to pick up Miri from daycare, her mother, Misaki, stands outside waiting for them. She says she has come to take Miri back. Unable to argue in front of Miri, they're forced to let Misaki into their apartment. Misaki told them that she has throat cancer and can't sing anymore which caused her to lose her job. She doesn't know how much time she has left to live, and wants to take Miri to live with her parents, who would adopt her after Misaki passes away. Kazuki is uncertain about Misaki's intentions, but she says that she knows about their assassin careers, and threatens to blackmail them. Later, Kyu Taro tells them that he called Misaki himself, passing on a threat from the boss. Either Rei returns to the organization, or Ogino will kill Kazuki and Miri to punish Rei's betrayal. They realize they can't keep Miri safe anymore. They take Miri on one last fun-filled day out to say goodbye. They enjoy shopping, eating out, playing games, and going on rides. At the end of the day, they hand Miri over to Misaki, pretending it's a sleepover and they'll see her in the morning. But in reality, they'll probably never see her again, and this made them feel very sad. Later, Rei and Kazuki talk about how the house feels empty without Miri. Rei then tells Kazuki that he has decided to go back to his father. Meanwhile, Miri feels happy to be with her mother, but she often wonders when Papa Rei and Kazuki will come to get her again, as she misses them dearly. Rei, on the other hand, agrees to return home and take over the family business. But his father isn't satisfied. He believes that Rei still has too many attachments. He shows Rei a picture of him with Miri and Kazuki, telling him that Rei should cut ties with them all together, but it may be difficult for him to do so. Thus, his father will get rid of them for him. Even when Rei begs his father to at least spare Miri, his father says that he's already sent Ogino to kill Miri and Kazuki. Rei goes out and calls Kazuki to save Miri, 
Kazuki reaches Miri's apartment to find that her mom has already been shot, but is still barely alive, while Miri is unaware of things happening as she sleeps behind closed doors. Now, Kazuki starts fighting with Ogino, but he suddenly shoots Kazuki in the shoulder. Yet before he can kill Kazuki, he hears police sirens approaching and runs away. Kazuki is left injured and waits for help, but Masaki dies in his arms, asking him to take care of Miri once she's gone. But just then, Kiyutaro arrives to help. Kazuki and Kiyutaro quickly leave the area with Miri, who's asleep. Kiyutaro takes them to a safe location, and Rei arrives soon after. After seeing that Miri's safe, Rei asks Kazuki about their next move. Kazuki explains that their plan is to eliminate any evidence of Miri's existence, to make it appear as if she died. From there, they'll place her in an orphanage, far away, and stay out of her life forever. But Rei says that he wants Miri to stay with them, where they can protect her. Kazuki initially disagrees, but after putting Miri back to sleep, he agrees, and tells Rei that they will div divide the household chores and childcare responsibilities more equally this time. They then go to Kiyutaro, telling him they plan to quit their assassin jobs to focus on being fathers for Miri. Now we see Kazuki, Rei, and Miri back home cooking breakfast together as it snows outside. It's Christmas once again, making it a year since they adopted her. When Miri's teacher asks if her mother will be joining them for the Christmas program, instead of telling Miri the truth about her mother's death, Kazuki says that Misaki will be unable to attend because she's on an important trip. He promises Miri that both he and Rei will attend the Christmas party at the daycare after their important job is done. They then travel to the organization to speak with Rei's father, as they want to leave the organization peacefully, but they're forced to shoot their way in instead. As they enter the building, Kazuki and Rei split up, with Kazuki getting caught by Ogino. Ogino holds a gun to Kazuki, but Rei arrives just in time to save him. Rei and Ogino engage in a fierce firefight, exchanging many gunshots. And while doing so, Rei gets shot by Ogino, but when Kazuki finds him, he's still alive. As Ogino approaches to shoot again, Kazuki manages to distract him and leads him to the kitchen. But before Ogino kills him, he asks Kazuki his last words, because he has a habit of noting the last words of each target in his diary. Then, Rei appears from behind and attacks with a knife. They engage in a fight, with Ogino gripping Rei's neck in an attempt to choke him. Suddenly, Kazuki stabs Ogino in the back while Rei headbutts him, driving the knife through Ogino as he falls on his back. Now, Rei insists on facing his father alone and instructs Kazuki to find an escape vehicle. During their shootout, Rei wounds his father and tells him his decision to leave the organization and be with his real family. To ensure that he can never be an assassin again, Rei intentionally shoots himself in the shoulder. Although his father almost shoots Rei in the back, he ultimately allows him to go. Despite showing up late, Kazuki and Rei manage to make it to Miri's Christmas program just in time to hear her class sing, concealing their numerous body injuries under Santa costume. From here, the story flashes forward to see a teenage Miri on her first day of high school. Ten years have passed, and Kazuki and Rei are now running a diner together. They prepare breakfast for Miri as they start their day in the diner. The story ends by showcasing a series of pictures that capture the moments from their lives together over the past decade. And that's how our story comes to a happy ending. We hope you enjoyed it, and if you want to see more videos like this, please like the video and subscribe to our channel. And I'll see y'all next time!